episode 13 of the Rolled and Burn podcast. My name is Emily and I am so glad that you are here today. I have a few things that I'd like to talk about as far as knitting and crocheting. I actually have a decent amount of sewing stuff to talk about too, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. First off, let me see here. Oh yes, this is a big one for me. It's not a very big project, but it took me absolutely forever to work on it and get it done. I don't know why. I have finally finished my Yorkville socks. One, two. I believe on the last podcast episode I talked about that I had finished one of them and that I was working on the second one. And now I have finished the second one. And I am just beyond thrilled to have these off the needles. Also, apologies if you can hear some of the wind noise in the background. I have the windows open just a crack because it is a delightfully gorgeous day outside. February has been teasing us with just the faintest hints of spring here, which I am not complaining about. I am 100% enjoying, but if there's any sort of blustering or whatnot that comes through, that's why the windows are open. Anyway, back to the socks. These are the Yorkville socks, which is a pattern by Mina Phillips of the Knitting X Pack podcast, and she has a absolutely tons of patterns available and it's this really fairly simple textured pattern. You can't see it particularly well because it is a self-striping yarn. This is the, it's a discontinued yarn. It's the Lime Brand Mani Petty, I believe is what it's called. I am just so so happy to have these off the needles. One of the things that took, made it take a little bit longer is that it took me absolutely forever to realize that I really need, needed to just print out the pattern, the texture repeat for the pattern, and it was going to go so much faster because once I did that, it was just easy sailing, super fast. I personally rather hate having some form of a tablet or having to sit in front of my laptop. Traffic noises. Laptop or my phone or something to be looking at a knitting pattern. It feels so clunky and weird to me, so I don't know why I didn't pay attention and realize that sooner, but I didn't. I eventually did, and now I have a finished pair of socks, which I am super happy about. <laughs> so for a brief period of time, I had no socks on my needles, which is just shocking. <laughs> so I have those as a finished object. And then I actually did end up finishing, I made my husband a, um, just a beanie stocking cap hat. I used the, the basic ribbed hat, I believe it is. I was working on another cabled hat and trying to kind of figure it out, um, but it just was not working with me. It was not cooperating. So I had purchased a pair of Chiagu knitting needles in the size 3, I think that's a 3.25 millimeter, but not 100% sure. <laughs> I had purchased them for another project and they were the size of needles that I actually needed for the hat. So basically in the space of like two days I knit him a hat and I was super happy to be able to get that done and off the needles because as I, I think I told the story in the last episode that we had unfortunately lost the hat that I had previously made for my husband and so for a period of about two weeks I was going back and forth trying to figure it out because I sort of didn't use a pattern for that hat and it was perfect like it fit beautifully it looked amazing like it was like the best hat <laughs> and I just could not figure out how to replicate it and it made it more difficult that I didn't have the original hat but in the end we got there, I knitted up the hat. I don't have it to show you because my husband's at work and he wore it. <laughs> so that was another finished object. And then the last finished object is a very, very tiny little finished object. I made these as a gift for my sister-in-law who uh, is expecting her first baby this year. And can we just talk about how tiny and adorable these little things are? <laughs> She's going to be having a little boy and I thought it would just be the cutest thing to knit a pair of little baby socks and so I did. <laughs> and I just, I cannot get over how tiny and cute they are. Like, 
This is my sock. This is a little baby sock. It's just the sweetest little thing. <laughs> and I just knit these out of scraps of yarn that I had left over, some of my hand dyed yarn. And I used the, what is it called? It's a free pattern. It's by Tabitha. I can't remember her last name. I'll put it on the screen. It's basically, it's like a basic newborn sock pattern and super simple, super easy. 32 stitches and then you work for the cuff. You do this teeny tiny itty bitty little baby heel. Like just look at how small that is. <laughs> and it is a heel flap and gusset and then you knit the foot and then just decrease it for a toe and I just honestly you guys I don't know if I have ever knit anything so cute or sweet and I can't wait to give them to her uh, she it's just a little surprise gift and I'm super pleased they're just a little <laughs> but I'm gonna stop gushing about those because I just I can't. I was showing all of my um, my siblings and my husband and my brother-in-law and they're just so cute. Anyway, <laughs> the next project, let me see, what do we want to talk about next? Let's finish talking about knitting stuff and then I have a crocheting project that I'm working on. So you may remember from a, if you've watched a couple of podcast episodes ago that I was talking about casting on the So Faded sweater by Andrew Mowry and I finally cast it on. <laughs> I have next to nothing to show for it because basically I cast this on and then I was working on my husband's hat and I was working on the baby socks. I was feeling more in the mood for sort of a mindless project so I haven't gotten any further than I think like the first row. <laughs> But I, the reason why I waited so long to cast it on was because I didn't completely read the pattern and I was positive that I needed a US size 3 needle in order to cast it on. I will need a US size 3 needle for the ribbing, but I already had the US size 5 needle that I would need. So I was like, silly goose. <laughs> But it all worked out because then I ended up going ahead and purchasing the needles that I needed and they were the needles I needed for my husband's hat so it all worked out. But I am getting ready to start working away on this out of this beautiful pinky mauve color. I think it's showing up a little bit pinkier on the screen than it is in real life. It's a little more muted. And this is just some of my hand dyed yarn and I absolutely love it. I think that this is one of those skeins that I... I had leftover dye in the pot and so I just chucked an extra skein in there and it came out stunning. <laughs> so it's like not a color that I can replicate, replicate, which is really sad because it would make a gorgeous sweater all by itself. But at least I will have it in a sweater mixed with a couple of other colors. So this is my brand new little teeny tiny little baby sweater. <laughs> And I believe, I haven't touched it in a couple of weeks, but I am also working on the Corbell sweater by Claire Walls of Flossy Knits. I just haven't done anything with it for a bit because I've been working on other projects. So that is still happening. It's just not actively being knit on. <laughs> and then the last knitting project that I have is, let me get it out of this needle holder. A pair of socks and I am loving it. I'm making a little pair of shorty socks and after knitting like several long socks I am so happy to be back to knitting a pair of little shorty socks and I am knitting these out of the West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply yarn in the Passion Fruit Cooler colorway. And this was one of my like dream yarns that I've wanted for so so long and I finally got it last year and I love it. It's like a little bit rustic, a little bit toothy, absolutely perfect for socks and I'm almost positive because this is a hundred gram ball I'm almost positive I'm gonna have enough yarn for two pairs of socks which is amazing I'm totally fine with that <laughs> but this is just again my basic 
sack recipe that I use for myself. It's 56 stitches on US size 1 or 2.25 millimeter needles and I think I did maybe 15 rows of one by one ribbing. I did a heel flap and gusset, eye of the partridge heel, and then I'm just working on the foot. And it's gonna get done super soon and I can cast on the next one. I'm so excited. <laughs> so that is all that I have to talk about as far as knitting. But I do have some crocheting to talk about. Okay, so here's my little stack of crocheted squares. <laughs> um, I think there's, let me see here, I'm gonna actually count it because I don't actually know how many squares I have. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, and I'm working on the 14th and I am in the process of making a blanket because I like making blankets. <laughs> I am using a the I Love This Cotton Yarn from Hobby Lobby and I am making a I'm going to link the pattern down below. There was a pattern that I found. I think I saw it on another YouTube video or something. It's a pattern for actually like a tote bag. And it's a bunch of crocheted squares and then a bunch of mushrooms like stitched on top. And I fell in love with it. I wouldn't really use a bag, but I realized that it's literally just a bunch of squares. So there's nothing to stop me from making a bunch of squares, sewing a bunch of mushrooms on it, and stitching them all together and making a blanket. Like, why not? <laughs> so that's what I'm in the process of doing. It's a very, very simple pattern. It's a free pattern. And it's basically a bunch of sort of granny squares, I guess. And this is what we've got. I've got 13 of them, like I said. I'm using the colors. Olive and this one, which is spunky, I believe, which I absolutely love. Like, just the little specks and flecks of other colors in there makes me super happy. <laughs> so, there's my squares, and then I actually have these three colors that I'm going to be using for the mushroom tops. And I'll put a picture up here on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. And then I just have a basic cream color. This is just antique cream that's going to be for the stalks. So this is Stonewash is blue. Bruschetta is this kind of rusty orange. It's coming up on the screen on my camera screen as a bright orange. This is very much like a rusty, think like terracotta, like distressed brick. That's this color. And then this one is gold, and it's kind of a mustardy yellow. And I think it's just going to look so, so good. So we've got these, and then we've got all these squares. And I absolutely love working on this. It's been so simple and so easy, and I... It's just so rhythmic. I've memorized the pattern for it and I can just sit there and crochet on one little thing at a time. And then it's like once I get done with the square, that square goes away and I start another square. And I am crocheting these with a US size, well I guess it's an H or 8 crochet hook or a 5 millimeter um, crochet hook. And this is my in progress square. <laughs> And yeah, like I said, I am enjoying this so, so much. It's super simple and easy and one of those things that it's really easy to take it along to family get-togethers or anything like that just because, like I said, I have it memorized and so I can sit there and crochet on it and it's like one little square at a time and it's coming along so beautifully. I'm so happy with how it looks and I chose to make it out of this cotton yarn because I've used this yarn to make little face cloths before and it softens up beautifully. I can throw it in the washer and the dryer and it's absolutely fine and I just wanted something to be like a really sort of a workhorse of a blanket and I think it's gonna be perfect. I'm super looking forward to how it's gonna turn out but I'm also absolutely loving working on it. So it's both a process and a product crocheting project. So highly recommend working on crochet squared to sew into a blanket. 
unless you mind ends because there's going to be a lot of ends to sew in. <laughs> but that's okay. There's sort of a rhythmic element to stitching in ends. It's not my favorite thing to do, but it doesn't take that long. So I will keep you updated on this. I have a feeling that it's going to be a regular feature on the podcast for the next while. You just see this stack of squares growing. <laughs> But that is all that I have in the way of yarn-related projects, but I do have some sewing to talk about. Okay, so first things first, I finally have finished my Asteria dress, and I love it. I wasn't sure if I was going to love it when I was working on it, which is part of why it took so long, and I wasn't sure if I was going to love it when I first finished it, but I've worn it two or three times now, and it's just... It's so comfortable and soft and warm and absolutely what I was hoping it would end up being. So this is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Astoria Dress. And I basically, honestly, I just used the bodice pieces. The sleeves are self-modified and then I used a just rectangle for the skirt and I pleated it into the waistline. I've added a couple of patch pockets on here, which I have discovered are my all-time favorite pockets. And then we've got the waist ties. I will say the waist ties for this dress in this flannel fabric are a little bit thick. I like that they match the rest of the dress, but I think that it would have been interesting to maybe try using some ribbon or something instead, because they're just, the chonky. <laughs> and this is just a, flannel shirting fabric that I got from Joann's like two or three years ago and yeah it's kind of like wearing a blanket in a very sneaky way and I just I love it it's it fits beautifully these are the buttons on the front these were just some buttons for my stash and yeah there's not a whole lot to say about it other than it's just it fits like a charm I believe I made a straight size 12. I think that's what it was. And I think that this one has a multi cup size. So it was a 12 with a D cup that I did. Um, and yeah, like I said, when I was working on it, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or if it was gonna turn out the way that I wanted it to. And so that part of why it took so long was just because I was like, mm, is this gonna be another sewing flop? Cause I've had a few of those recently. And it wasn't, so I'm so happy about that. And it means I have two other pieces of flannel fabric that I will probably make at least one of them turn it into another stereo dress because it just, it's so good. I'm thinking with the other one that I'll do the sleeves a little bit longer because these, I put elastic in the cuff and I use a little bit wider of elastic than I was planning to. And so they kind of end, the sleeves kind of end about, about there. Which isn't my favorite sleeve length, but it works and I'm not going to complain because it's so comfy. <laughs> So I think for the next one I'll make sure I do full length sleeves and then I'm thinking about doing like a tiered skirt. I think that would look so cool to have like a full maxi skirt. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> but yeah, it's, this has definitely been a sewing success which has kind of boosted my sewing, my desire to do sewing. Which leads me to the next thing, which is an almost completed Felicity dress. <laughs> I'm actually wearing, uh, this is one of my first editions or versions of the Felicity dress. And the Felicity dress is a sewing pattern by the same designer, um, Jennifer Lauren Handmade. And this one is made out of this stunning sort of city skyline fabric that I got from fabric.com almost two years ago. Well, not almost two years ago, year and a half ago. I bought it at the same time that I purchased a bunch of fabric to make my wedding dress when my husband got, uh, when my husband and I got married in 2020. I went ahead and got some other fabrics at the same time because fabric.com tends to have fairly expensive shipping. And so, like you do, I got extra fabric so I wouldn't have to pay shipping. And I absolutely love this. It's just a quilting cotton. 
and it's been sitting there on my shelf for a very long time. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with it, and then I decided that it should be another Felicity dress because I absolutely love my Felicity dresses. And so far it's almost done. I have to finish stitching in the zipper. That's why all the pins are up the back. And then I'll have to hem it and then it'll be done. And again, I just use a basic rectangle gathered panel for the skirt and then I've put patch pockets on it. I've discovered that these are just my favorite type of pockets. I put them on one dress and then Basically, I've put them on pretty much every single dress since then. Just because I so fell in love with them. They just work so well and I love just having it very obvious where my pockets are. And sometimes the inseam pockets can be a little bit sneaky and you're trying to find them and you're trying, you're in a hurry and I love patch pockets. <laughs> So I actually have been working on this today and I've gotten a bunch done of it, done on it and I'm honestly kind of hoping to get it done either today or tomorrow. I think that would be so cool. And then I want to go ahead and cut out probably the next Asteria dress and then maybe another Felicity dress. <laughs> I'm a little addicted guys. <laughs> I just love this pattern so much. It's so basic and simple. It's a little sleeveless dress but I can wear it with cardigans all winter long. I, I love it so so much. <laughs> So there's that one and that is about all of the crafting related stuff that I have to talk about. Oh, this is going to be so lovely. It's, gonna, it's got such a nice full skirt. Cannot wait to try it on <laughs> and get to wear it. I've got to get that zipper put in and then I can give it a try. Alright so that's pretty much all that I have to talk about as far as crafting, knitting, sewing, etc. I don't have too much else planned for today. I think I'm probably going to sit and do a little bit of knitting, um, probably some more sewing, <laughs> some reading. I've been doing a lot of reading. I've been reading a lot of Patricia Wentworth's books. She wrote the Miss Silver Murder Mysteries and I discovered them in January watching Miranda Mills YouTube channel and fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> and I've pretty much been obsessively reading my way through the entire series. I think I'm down to the last three books and I think there's 32 in all. And I'm currently reading The Listening Eye which I'm super intrigued to read through because so far the character that we're introduced to is a lady who is deaf and so she does a lot of lip reading and for those of you that don't know I'm a little bit hard of hearing and so it's one of those things that I very much rely on a lot of sort of lip reading seeing people's faces and the shapes the lips make and whatnot I can typically understand them better so this whole thing with masks and COVID and all of that has been very difficult for me to understand what people are saying because I can't see the mouth. <laughs> so I'm super interested to read through the rest of the book and see. I'm hoping she's not the one that's going to end up getting murdered because I just think it's so cool that the main character so far is a lady who is deaf and reads lips. Like I just, I can't wait to see how it turns out. So yes, I've been reading those and I highly, highly recommend them. I was blathering on to my mother about them and telling her that she really, really had to read them. And that's kind of about it. Have I read anything else interesting? I reread A Wrinkle in Time by Margaret Lingle? Lingle? I, I always pronounce it in my head as Margaret La Ingle. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct or not, but I just reread it. Uh, last week. I haven't read it since I was fairly young and oh my goodness it's such a good book. Um, yeah I've been watching, I've been re-watching the Leverage TV series. It's currently on IMDB TV where you can watch it free with some commercials and ads in there and that was one of those TV series that I discovered when I was going through a particularly difficult patch in my life and 
it's such a good show. It's almost like this crew of five people are playing Robin Hood and they're doing, they're taking down the rich people and helping out the poor people and I love it so much. It's very episodic so you can just watch one episode at a time or you can watch them kind of in and out of order. It doesn't particularly matter too much and the characters are all lovely. It's relatively drama free. There's nothing there's no like super long ongoing problems and it's not stressful or anything like that and it's so witty and funny and it's very much my style of a TV show. <laughs> I just, I can't stand TV shows where there's super long drawn out drama or stress or things like that. It's just, I can't handle it. <laughs> so I've been rewatching some of that. Um, yeah, other than that, we haven't been doing too much. My sister and her roommate were here in town for the President's Day weekend. They got the weekend off from college, so they came and stayed for the weekend, and we had an absolutely lovely time. It was amazing to have them here and to just get to hang out, and we watched um, a couple of Studio Ghibli movies. We watched from Up on Poppy Hill and Howl's Moving Castle, and it was so nice. <laughs> We just get along so well and uh, like my husband and the girls and me like we just we vibe well <laughs> and so it's so lovely to be able to hang out with them and spend some time with them um, but other than that we haven't really been doing too much um, just staying home cleaning house working on projects and my husband off at work doing his work thing <laughs> So yeah, we've been pretty chill around here, um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up before I blab around for too long. I hope that you all are doing very well. I thank you so much for watching this video and hanging out with me. I hope that everything is going smoother, that you've got some projects that you're loving, that you're working on. If you have any books that are old-fashioned, stress-free, drama-free that you love, I would really like to hear about them because that is my sort of book. So. Do please leave them in the comment down below and yeah, you, you know, you can tell me what you're working on, anything like that. Thank you again for hanging out with me and I will see you very soon on the next one. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.